we've talked a little bit about medicinal herbs. Let's, can you elaborate a little bit about the way that medicinal herbs can be used, uh, maybe even integratively or in other ways with modern medicine? I taught in a, and still teach integrative medicine because, as you said so aptly, if you're in a car accident, you want to go to a trauma center. You don't want to go to a naturopath or most naturopaths. Um, so I've taught integrative medicine. I've taught physicians how to replace specific antibiotics for specific bacterial infections because the bacteria haven't developed resistance to these phytochemicals. Uh, the same with fungal infections. Uh, myriad. I don't think there's a disease that can't be treated mm. with herbs. And that's 85% of our medicines are copies of them. So, mm -hmm. you know, to, for anybody to say herbal medicine is ineffective is essentially saying medicine's ineffective because right. it's just copying. Because everything that we have virtually is a, is a, a man-tweaked version of a natural herb. Yes. And that's so they can patent it. Right. Now, I've gotten patents. This is a little bit interesting. Uh, I've gotten patents on herbal products. But I got the patents on their function. Okay. I have a product out now, and it's patented because it stimulates the immune system. I had to prove that it stimulated the immune system by doing lymphocyte subset panels and submitting them with the patent application to the patent office. So the far, it's not that the pharmaceutical companies couldn't get patents on natural products if they knew how to do it, if they knew how to utilize them mm -hmm. and have much more effective medicine. But the lazier way is to copy it, make it synthetic. Ephedrine and ephedra is a great example. Right. You know, you can still buy ephedrine, but you can't buy ephedra. But ephedrine has a lot more side effects. And the Fedra's been used in teas forever. Right. So the problem is, many years ago, I needed to have a tool, and I also needed to graduate, in all honesty. Uh, I was required to write a book on the phytochemical basis, the chemical basis of herbal medicine, and break down the most used herbs and show the chemicals they contain and what their actions were on the body. Mm. And I wrote it for pharmacists and I wrote it for physicians. I handed it in, completed my work, got my degree, and never thought much more about it. And you're very familiar with the book. Yeah, yeah, I am. As, as a matter of fact, kind of a leading topic here because I uh, just wanted to let folks that are watching this video know that within the next month, by, by middle of September here, 2011, we should have, be coming out with a, a book that we're collaborating on that, that you have written, and then I'm basically going through an editing, and, and uh, we're adding to as well yeah. as, we, as we speak, uh, which will be called uh, the, the Definitive Guide to Herbal Medicine, How to Survive the Coming Pharmaceutical Monopoly. That's right. And that's a, that's a long title of the book, and it's basically going to teach people how to make their own medicines if, when, the 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 government begins to regulate all of the medicines, all the natural medicines, you will need to learn how to make your own. And this will be the guide that everyone needs to know how to make their own tinctures, how to make their own herbal medicines, because where are herbs growing? They're growing everywhere. They're growing in your yard, and you don't even know what's there. That's true. And... Unfortunately, our government is moving quickly towards codex. Mm -hmm. And it's my fervent hope that enough people will read this book, especially after you've done the rewrite on it, because, as I said, I wrote it for doctors and pharmacists, mm -hmm. and you've really done a phenomenal job in turning that around. I'm bringing so it down a notch because I'm not as smart as you are. <laughs> I wouldn't say that. I'll make sure I can understand it. I, I wouldn't say you're not as smart, but you've done a phenomenal job in bringing it down to the level that people can understand it normal people can understand it Thank you. and the one thing the government can't do they can ban the importation but if you're growing them and you know how to make and you know how to them, use them yeah they can't stop that they can't stop that 
and it is the most the, the the research that you put into this book is phenomenal. I was blown away when I read through it, the different uh, components, the constituents of the of the herbs, the medicinal uses, how to make the different tinctures or a salve or a bolus, just all of the different things that someone would need to know. And the 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 book's actually going to be full color and beautiful pictures of each herb, so people can actually recognize them growing as well. It's something that everybody's going to need within the next couple years. You're going to need to know how to yeah. make your own medicine. So. I think that's probably true. And I think certainly we deserve the right to have a choice. I do too. And that's what it's all about is the freedom of choice. Uh, I was talking yesterday or earlier in an interview about herbal medicine actually it being a constitutional issue. It is. The right to life, liberty mm -hmm. and pursuit of happiness. And without that choice of what doctor I want to go to to be treated which is being taken away state after state after state after state. Mm -hmm. They're eliminating naturopaths. And they're actually making it a felony to practice right. naturopathic medicine. So, uh, South Carolina, wasn't it? North Carolina. North Carolina. First state I was licensed as a naturopath in was okay. North Carolina. Now it's a felony to practice right. there. Uh, as they take your rights as a citizen away to life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness, which is all based on your health, and the choice of life, um, unless the people become more than cheap, they're really going to need that book. Yeah, yeah, they are. So I'm, I'm excited about it. I think it's going to be a, a huge help to, to thousands of people that were able to get a hold of the book because it's going to, I can't wait to get it done just so I can share it with my own family because I want my brother, sister, uncles, cousins to have this information because they need it. Every doctor I know's already put in an order. Yeah. So. It's going to be good. Anyway. It will. It's going to be a great book. Look forward to getting it out. It was nice talking with you. You too, Dr. Mike. Good talking to you, brother.